man. I'm gonna kick it off with my sound off. Uh, who, uh, one, uh, we gonna, I, I'm tired. I'm, I got, I'm shooting at another light skin. See what y'all make me do to the light skin community. Two, 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 two of our members. I, 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 I got to talk about today. Um, but I got a, a very special video I want to play real quick before I get into my rant. Let's let, let's let's play this. We're gonna have a, a relentless approach to fix our weakness. We're gonna maintain great self and self awareness of who we are. We're gonna solve problems with open communication and candor. And we're gonna consistently put players in position to succeed. And the last thing, the most important piece is we're gonna take the North and never give it back. That was your Chicago Bears general manager, Ryan Poles, uh, almost three years ago. We're coming up on about two months from that being three years ago, January 25th, 2022, where he was introduced uh, to the Chicago media as the new general manager uh, in the media room. They still don't put us in. I don't know why they don't put us in that big old room they got. They got a lot of space over there. Uh, but that quote, when I saw it, I said, hey, that's like <laughs> I, I, I was, it just sounded like something I don't want to hear from a team that ain't dominated the Northern God knows how long. Now it looks even funnier. As I was watching the game yesterday, and I got to give Bears fans credit because I was just looking at Soldier Field, like maybe a couple minutes before the game started, you know, especially when I came down to, you know, the, you know, the, the, the rap, not the rap, but like the corridor, not the, what's the word I'm looking for? Really, what a, what a fan seat's at. I'm looking for the word. Um, that area i haven't been down in a long time you know i went to go holler at mikey you know my guess some good seats too by the way my, my guess some real good seats. i'm like damn they look nice over there but <laughs> he said motherfuckers getting money over here yeah, yeah right exactly <laughs> so you know when i was walking around the concourse that's what i was looking for walking around the concourse seeing all the fans i'm like yo win or lose no matter what this fan base is gonna always show up and it kind of made me sad a little bit like they're taking advantage of the fan base because they deserve to be a bigger product. Ryan Poles is a liar. And I, and I don't care what people say about what I'm about to say, but he's a liar. He, he lied to our faces. The We're going to take, we're going to give the North and never give it back. All the stuff we've been hearing. The, the remember, remember from the beginning of this year, this is the off season of Ryan Poles. And he went up to the you know, combine film himself. He was at that exit press conference where he announced he's going to keep loose feeling himself, being on hard knocks. Well, this is the the deepest team I've ever seen. It's going to be hard to make this roster while he let uh, Vilas Jones make the roster again. And then saying, oh, it's time to win. He said that multiple times. Those are the last words that you heard from him on the final episode of Hard Knocks. Fast forward a couple months later, four and seven right now. Five-game losing streak. Let's just be 100% real. It's going to be a six-game losing streak in about 72 hours. Like, let's not even lie to ourselves. Uh, and this will be the second biggest loser streak of his tenure as Bears general manager. We can forget the infamous 10-game uh, losing streak in 2000. Uh, and can you bring that comment up? That's bullshit. Bring that comment up real quick. The last one. Expectations were never. Get the fuck out of here with that shit. Y'all Bears fans got to stop with that. Uh, re- 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 uh, expectations were realistic. Now that the, the roof didn't cave in. Everybody said that this team would be in playoff contention. I don't want to hear that shit. Get, get out of here with that. Um, there were definitely. Hey, wait, real quick, Scott. I'll go better. If you look at the games that we lost, we. We very well could be and in comp- that expectation range. Coaching, you, you, you're seven and four. But I'm gonna get to that yep. in a minute. But back to Ryan Poles. You said this was going to be a season that we were going out there going to win. And now you look at it. The main problem, which everybody saw coming a year ago, when the 2003 2023 season was still going on, get rid of Eva Flukes. And I'm not saying the players deserve to be off the hook. No, players go out there and play the game. They deserve blame for this as well. But if you look at all the bear sauces they've had this year, it has had something to do with coaching. Just look at the stats. Look at the records. He's 0-2 against the vision right now. And it's going to be on three in a couple in a couple days. And it goes back to Ryan Poles. As I was listening to Caleb Williams talk in his press conference yesterday, and he gave very glowing words about Thomas Brown. The rest of the offense has given glowing words about Thomas Brown. It's something that stands out to me right now in that locker room. I feel like it's two different locker rooms with two different vibes right now. I feel like the defense is, is really broken down, and 
um, you know, dis- disappointed because they're supposed to be the stronghold of this, of this of this team. And now they're just not. The offense feel like they've got new life. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, offense feel like they've got new life because of who their new play call is. And so as I sit there, and I'm listening to him say this, and I'm, I'm watching the game plan the last two games, and I'm just like, what was Shane Waldron doing? Which leads me back to Ryan Poles. What made you think this dude was the person to hire? Like, it's obvious that it's it, just all two games. It's distinct differences. He was playing around with his food for not nine weeks, for nine months from the day you hired him. And I remember that press conference when they announced they hired Shane Walsh. And they were so happy and so proud of the extensive search that they led uh, to find their offensive coordinator just to get rid of him midseason. It makes no sense to me, and it makes me – weary or actually afraid of what's going to happen with this next coaching hire because Matt Flutes is gone. He's gone. The Bears know the Bears fans know they're gone. Bears players know he's gone. There's even a video of George McCaskey at a Bears tailgate yesterday talking to the fans and fans are telling them fire Flutes. And he just looks at what I'm like, I know, I know. Everybody knows. Flutes himself knows he's dead man walking. He's probably put that nice house he has up on Zillow or something because he's not going to be there anymore. The question here and the problem I have right now, I'm scared that no matter how well Kayla's been playing, that they're going to hire the wrong dude again. I've said this time and time again. It's as, as hard of a time as this franchise has had to find a good quarterback, they've had just as hard of a chance finding an actually good coach. There are three good coaches in the history of this 105-year organization really two of you want to include just the modern era no disrespect to george Alice, but in the super bowl era they've only had two good coaches mike dicka and lovey smith and as great as lovey smith was he was a company man let's keep it real they saw what mike dicka was they saw the loud powerful personality the the you know the that kind of football guy that you knew who was just as popular off the field as he was on the field no matter said, yo, I know you had the greatest decade in modern Bears history where you won a Super Bowl, went to uh, you know, three, you know, three NFC championship games. You won the division five times. We don't want that anymore because of the loud personality. They let him leave the door in 1992, and they have not had a, a coach with a bravado and swagger or balls in a long time. And it's because of the front office, it's because of the ownership. They don't want that. Let's just look at the whole Thomas Brown Shane Walter thing again. You know, uh, Blues didn't want Thomas Brown because he didn't want somebody who would challenge him. Now that he's putting up numbers and it looks like his job is actually going to be gone. Now he wants to go up there and take credit for that. I found that funny yesterday when he was asked a question about the offense looking better. We know it's a collaborative process. No, it's not. And then today, trying to take credit for the Thomas Brown thing. So my thing here to Ryan Pose, if you don't get it right, you're looking like you're on Florida. We're giving you all this love for the DJ Moore trade that ended up being Caleb Williams. Awesome trade. Amazing trade. But there's two things can be true at the same time. That also saved you from a different way of building the team. They didn't get Caleb Williams. They were just all right because they were bad. They got it because they got a trade that really everybody would accept outside of the, the, the Panthers. I don't know why they did that. And you see the other holes on this team. Look at the question marks from the people he drafted. I love Jaquan Brisker. I love Kyler Gordon. Neither one of them are all pros. Neither one of them are pro bowl. They can't stay on the field half the time. What has he really done to give the praise that he's given? And I've watched it. And we're sitting up here, we're sitting there having the same conversations that we were having 12 months ago. Oh, let's look at the drafting. Let's look at, we're talking about coaching again. I'm tired of it. I'm really, really getting tired of it. And what I'm also getting tired of is certain media trying to get mad at fans because they want to see some light in the tunnel with the way Caleb Williams is playing. Number one, the Bears never had a quarterback as good or as talented as Caleb Williams. Number two, uh, what? How the fans have no say on wins and losses. As a fan, you want to find some type of happiness. So you want to find that in a quarterback that's actually playing well. Don't get mad at them saying, oh, it's about wins. Yeah, it is about wins. But the fans don't control wins and losses. Tell the ownership that. Tell the front office that. That has nothing to do with fandom. And we can sit up here and talk about how great Caleb Williams is. And I think he's having a good rookie season. I think he's going to finish even better. I think this kid is a stud. But it's you. if you don't have the right coaching, they're going to be those a franchise who not ruined them, because I think Caleb is beyond ruining at this point, but not getting everything they could out of him because you have idiots surrounding them. This is a big, big winner for this franchise. And I'll be honest, I have no faith in them getting it right. Any bit of uh, bail that I used to shoot them is gone. 
it is completely gone. They need to get the job done, and that's ultimately on the McCaskies, Kevin Warren, and Ryan Paul. Other line, so I'm not gonna hold you. Money on the other line, so 